All right, so welcome once again. Um, we've, uh, we just in the last hour, uh, we focused on the family altar and uh, intercession. Uh, thank you, Abni and uh, Anita, once again for declaring scripture over our families on our behalf. Um, may God's word be fulfilled even as we continue keeping this, these things, specifically our children and families in prayer. We're going to uh, look at the next portion or um, uh, the, the next set of spiritual growth and nourishment. And uh, that is we're moving away outside from the family into the local church. And one part, an important part of our spiritual growth and development is knowing what the local church um, does for us and what, the, what, what is the importance of the local church as we nurture our families in the knowledge of God and in our spiritual growth. So the local church is uh, a very important aspect of um, our growth, of our lives. And uh, we're going to be looking at the, uh, uh, the, mm, the importance of it, as well as uh, certain elements of how uh, we, can, we can involve ourselves or our family members in the service of the local church as well and by doing so how do we also bring about um, you know kingdom culture the kingdom of god in in our lives um, the the church being involved in a church is uh, a very important part of being a believer and finding a church where uh, you know the word of god is taught uh, it is centered on on Jesus Christ, as well as a church that is filled by the power of the Holy Spirit, um, is a church that we need to focus to uh, to be a part of. Just like um, you know, uh, we if you if you look at uh, uh, um, you know, when you are growing a certain plant, uh, you know, for those who are gardeners would know that the, a plant been grown in, in the midst of other plants of its kind thrive a lot better than maybe those single plants. Not that they don't, but they thrive a lot better. So as believers, as being within a community or a fellowship of believers, it is important that we are, we plant ourselves in the house of God. Um, being, in, being in church is like being in a family. And, uh, you know, very often we, we see that um, people have the notion that getting to church is only to, you know, it's like having a good morning coffee. Right, you go to church, attend the worship, uh, you know, have uh, have the word, and that's it. And you you come out, and you just leave the mug on the side, right? But um, having your coffee also means you need, may need to make it, and you need to wash it, and keep it back, keep the mug back. So similarly, um, very poor example, but but yet for the fact that uh, being in a local church, uh, you know, being a member of a church is not just about attendance and and. Uh, and not having to do anything with it. A part of that spiritual nourishment is being involved um, uh, in serving the, the church, in serving the different members of the church. So being able to find a place that you can stay is something that will be helpful because you grow, you, you nurture others, you nurture yourself through, um, through being planted in a particular place. Okay, so by doing that, we're not just helping ourselves, but we also teach our children or the generations after that uh, uh, a church definitely builds uh, each other up, and we we need um, the the um, the strength of the church to further the kingdom of God uh, through what we may be doing individually and also what we are doing collectively. So we're going to be looking at some factors of how we can 
um, uh, we can nurture the family to understand how we can be a part of uh, a part of a local church and thereby extending God's kingdom. So the first and important thing, and this is a uh, this is a simple principle, to being sure that um, you are in church every Sunday. Uh, you know, we see that um, it was a if, when you look at the early church we see that it was a practice for them to meet on the first day of the week. And we see that in, in scripture and those scriptures is given in your notes that uh, the early church met uh, the first day of the week. And um, even, even uh, you know, the writer of Hebrews talks about that in, in the verse of uh, 24, chapter 10, verse 24 and 25. It says, let us be concerned for one another to help one another to show love and to do good. Let us not give up the habit of meeting together as some are doing. Let us encourage one another all the more since you see that the day of the Lord is coming nearer. So establishing the practice of coming together of uh, of the family going together to to church so that you get together with other believers to worship to pray to learn god's word as also fellowship uh, when you make this you know like a practice uh, it, it begins to happen so i remember right from the time when i was a child every sunday we'd go to church there wasn't uh, I can I can probably count on my fingers the days that I didn't go, and there was never an excuse of exams, never an excuse of um, laziness or tiredness. Only if you are really really sick, or if you aren't in town and you're traveling. And usually, I remember our travel would never be uh, around a Sunday either. You know, we would probably take uh, uh, an extra day off, but would never be on a Sunday. We would ensure getting back on a Sunday. So making this a norm, making this a practice, a discipline is that um, uh, which, which helps even the family, the children understand that it is, it, it's a discipline. It's something that you do to, uh, to build each other up as well as to grow within yourself. Okay. So yeah, there, there could be certain challenges that may come up because of work settings or things like that. But, you know, we recommend that you move around uh, those requirements and avoid uh, working or taking up assignments on a Sunday, but being in church to meet your family. It's like you meeting your family and, uh, you know, uh, working with them and praying with them, listening to God's word, fellowshipping with them is, is very important. So establish that as a practice, not just um, uh, for you as an adult, but even for the children. Uh, why do we do this? Because, like we said, the Lord considers uh, you know the church as his household so when you see in 1 timothy 3 15 it says but if i delay this letter will let you know how you should conduct yourselves in god's household so he calls it the lord's household he calls, calls it god's family so the church is not a place where like a social gathering we come up and we you know give our attendance uh, you know for service and and then you leave it is there where you're uh, you're understanding uh, you're you're nurturing others too as well as being nurtured so as part of being in the family of god we develop good relationships with other people of God, where you can love, you care, you support, you bless, you help, you encourage one another. So it's it's God's family. It's a household where you're where you are uh, building each other up and belonging to a place. There is a place. There is a belonging that you have. That I have another family, and I've heard many. Um, you know, believers say, I have a second home and that's my church. And that's that's a beautiful thing that, you know, you have an extended place, an extended family that uh, you can share life with and uh, work together, encourage, love, help, um, seek each other, grow each other up. So uh, not just being there, but even a place where you feel that you belong, a place where you're accepted into the family of God, where uh, all members uh, uh, help and strengthen each other. Okay, uh, 
by being a part of a church, we are also called to to be of service in church, to be to be at a place where we can serve God through serving the church. When we look at First Peter four ten to eleven. Um, it reads, as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So the gifts that each one of us have received is something uh, that we also use or give back to God. So whatever has been given to you, uh, First Peter says, to be a good steward of what has been given to you, of whatever gifting God has given you, to be a good steward of it for the glory and for the of uh, for the grace uh, from the grace of God that He gives you. Okay, so and there are certain examples that it says. It says, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To Him belong the glory and the dominion forever. So whatever we have been given, it could be certain giftings, skills, um, uh, and, and it could be anything. It doesn't, it, it just doesn't mean that only those who are up on the pulpit or those who are up singing or those who've got the, um, you know, the, the exposed talent uh, is uh, is anything even even smaller little things of you know just arranging chairs or ensuring you're doing things at the at the background uh, you know and and it it's actually quite amazing to see how God places some skills in people uh, that they're good at so there may be some who who do administrative tasks who are really good at administrative tasks and using that to serve God or people who are good at um, media and technology and using that to to uh, work work uh, um, in church or th there are so many areas where we do this um, for for God so it's it's not a place where we are showcasing our uh, talents or our gifts but it is for service so whatever we are given it is given back for service so encouraging every member of the family to be able to engage in some way some part of their time or their effort or any skill towards uh, the ministry or the work of the local church and there are so many areas that uh, one can be involved and each of them are as important as uh, as the other there's there's no work done in the service of god or service of uh, in in god's family that is demeaning or that is um, that should be looked down upon everything every service has its own dignity has its own honor because we're doing it unto god not unto each other so serving the church so you know for those of us who have children encouraging them first of all by being a good example of uh, putting yourselves uh, up in front and ministering to uh, the church and then and uh, thereafter also encouraging your children to uh, get on to, to any place even if it may be an ushering or it is uh, you know organizing chairs um i remember the first time that i got into uh, you know to to serving was helping in the children's church at that point of time you know there was there was one leader who would help the children uh, who would uh, uh, you know um, bring about god's word the rest were volunteers and all we had to do was you know ensure that the children are engaged or you know come in and uh, arrange the chairs and dust it off or you know if a child wants to go to the toilet take them that was all that was there so th those were the initial times of my my serving but uh, you know i i still remember that each of what you do is is honored by god the time and the effort you take to bringing back whatever skills you have is honored by god okay uh the next would be mentoring you know coming to um uh, uh, an important part of living in in a community is to engage in mentoring with those uh, 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 in in the fellowship like for those of us who may be at a workplace you know even if you are given a task you may be you may have someone under you 
who's learning from you. And you've been given the responsibility to teach them well. So, so why not in, in, in a church community? We see in Titus uh, 2, chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, uh, you know, he says, he, he gives this uh, uh, instruction to the church and he gives the instruction to the older women and says, um, you know, in the same way, instruct the older women to behave as women should who live a holy life. They must not be slanderers or slaves to wine. They must teach what is good in order to train the younger women to love their husbands and children. So, uh, you know, this instruction that was given is to, is maybe concerning very uh, mundane, practical things of how, you know, you conduct yourself as a wife, what you should be doing as a, um, as a young wife, you know, they, they would have probably shared notes or, you know, come up in struggles with little things that they were having in their marriage, but there were older people to mentor them. Okay, so we assume that this this is a practice that you know anyone uh, uh, can older older men women can engage with younger men or women depending um, I mean of course gender specific there again okay Re regarding practical things we also see that even Paul uh, you know writes to Timothy and says this in First Timothy four twelve do not let anyone look down on you because you're young but be an example to the believers in your speech, your conduct, um, your love, your faith and purity. So he encourages Timothy to live a life of example. And you see here how Paul is encouraging him. Paul is taking on the, um, the mentorship role and is modeling to him how he needs to be and thereby be out of his life, uh, showing how uh, other believers could conduct themselves. So mentoring so being being in a family uh, is like being is uh, is a part of being uh, uh, in in a church family as well so just like how you nurture your children also coming to a place of either receiving nurturance yourself or being able to nurture others and out of this you know creates a greater um, stronger community of believers uh, the next important part is that of life groups. And we see um, uh, it may be called differently in different churches. It may be known as cell groups or uh, life units, um, you know, or prayer groups, uh, uh, whatever. But they are specifically smaller groups of people who meet in the premises of a home or maybe another convenient location so that you can engage, build a relationship, and also have fellowship with one another. And of course, with the aim of growing as disciples of Jesus Christ. We see this also in the early church. We see this in Acts 5.42. It says, and daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as Christ. Or Acts 2.46, it says, breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food and gladness and simplicity of heart. So they continued daily with one accord in the temple, not just at church, but also at, at homes. So th this becomes important because, you know, in a larger church, it may be more difficult to have meaningful connections with everybody. So when it is smaller, the connections are deeper, uh, the encouragement is stronger, you know, you walk with each other through life situations. So one way of having a, a, a meaningful connect is to uh, being a part of a life group during some part during the week. And, um, you know, this, this not only uh, we, we see that not just discipleship happens, but there is also relationships that are built through the uh, effect of life groups. Okay, uh, I'm going to stop here for a minute. I haven't heard anybody's voice today. Is Would anyone like to make any comments or probably maybe I'll raise a question here. Uh, what have you seen as the benefit of a life group or a cell group? Um, in your experience of um, of being part of one or the lack of one anybody just i just like to engage with people suddenly i just feel i'm the only one talking
uh, everyone's awake, right? Yes, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, no, we're awake. Um, so, Pastor, um, I think this is this is an area that um, I have um, I have not ex unfortunately not experienced. Okay. Um, and uh, and this is something that I strongly feel uh, has been missing uh, in my life uh, for a long time now. Uh, and um, very recently, I've started praying for it. Um, I've I've understood uh, over the last I think very this year itself, uh, come across several places where uh, I've understood that um, God has called us uh, to be a community. Of believers to be a part of a small group, not necessarily a big group, but but to be a part of a, a small group and share each other's burden and pray with each other. And uh, I and my family we've been going solo for a long time, for the longest time. Uh, so I've been praying for it, and um, and uh, I know that uh, once uh, God places me uh, in the right group, uh, that um, that there will be a lot of spiritual growth uh, for me and my family uh, so i'm just waiting uh, I'm waiting for god to open doors uh, for that one thank you sammy thank you for sharing thank you anybody else i think uh, harrison had unmuted no i omitted you know to let you know that we are still awake <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> okay but if, if i want to share something okay um i heard in you know, the media department in my local church and um my wife is head is heading the children department but there's so many things you know when i when i look at church and i see the behavior and the character of um um people's service to god it troubles me because you know when you look at the commitment you know you put into service you you look at the commitment you put into seeing God's work, you know, move forward. And then you will now see others, you know, who will sluggishly, you know, criticize you, you know, for what you do, why they are not doing anything. So the thing, you know, it's just like, you know, you you cited in about, you know, Paul, you know, writing to Timothy that he should not... um you know, be intimidated, you know, by his young age, you know, but, you know, be conscious of, you know, his words and his actions, you know, towards, you know, service to God. Sincerely speaking, that is what we need, you know, because there are times, you know, where we want to author things, you know, that are not pleasing to God. And this can be as a result of, you know, what, you know, we see happening around us or happening in the church. And for me, it's more like, you know, when I go to church and I walk in church, I treat it, I treat, you know, my service to God as we am treating my business. So the way, you know, I don't want to, what I don't want to see in my business, I don't want to see it in church. So the way I want to treat my own business or maybe or my job that they pay me salary is the same way I want to treat when I find myself, you know, doing what I'm doing in the house of God. Whether they pay me or they don't pay me, it is very important, you know, we treat it as the way, you know, we want to treat anything that is special to us so that... God himself, you know, will be pleased that, yes, people, you know, we have respect him and we love him and we're obedient to him in everything that we do. Because I can tell you that even in my own local church, you know, when I see what is happening, it can be crazy. And it's enough, you know, for you to just tell yourself that, okay, it's enough. Maybe I should just step out, you know, just like, you know, my brother, someone who said, there are so many reasons, you know, that can make someone, you know, pipe low for a very long time. Because, you know, when people don't see the the effort you know, you're putting to see that the work of God don't suffer, 
one can be discouraged, you know, to just pipe low. But the truth is that no matter what it is, you know, we still need to keep, you know, doing what we do because we don't serve men, we serve God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Harrison. Yeah, that is, uh, I think that's such an important point that Harrison brought about is whatever we do for the Lord needs to be in uh, taken with as much seriousness and reverence like how we would do in a place where we are being paid. And, uh, you know, that really shows, expresses our commitment to God himself. Thank you. Thank you. I think there was someone, Kennedy, I think you had raised your hand. Would you like to share? Yeah, yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Just to add on what uh, Brother Harrison said, eh? I have a personal experience. Just like in our group, eh? we decided to have a men's week where we conduct all the services from the ushering. From ushering, making sure that everything is in order. And uh, it's been a blessing actually because I've seen it foster by young people who had talent, who had the ability. You know? it, it, it was a source of pregnant. And it's really a blessing. But uh, something I say it comes for a lot of volunteers. You have the time, go early, make sure the church is clean, make sure everything is orderly, make sure the person is, uh, is still taken care of. But uh, to be honest, I've seen God work and uplift even the younger brothers. People who are seeing it, you see, they, they, they open up when you get closer to each other. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Candy. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, when, when, when you're in a community, when you're in serving together, and I think he made a mention of certain teams. Um, I remember when we were part of, when I was a part of a children's church, we would meet on uh, you know, on some days of the month together to just, and most most of the children's church here and with us were women. So we would all meet for a potluck, you know, cup together and cook something and enjoy a meal together. And that in itself was such strong fellowship where uh, we were able to uh, hear from each other, encourage and build each other up. Yeah. Uh, yes, Isaac, I think you have, you, you've raised your hand. Would you like to share? Yeah, I want to share my own experience. Um, like eight years ago, I was part of a church that believed in the cell unit and then house churches, mm -hmm. as we call it house fellowship. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, a growing place for me to have developed. I was taught how to study the word of God. We usually have it in different places. But every week, we always have house fellowship happening in one area or the other. But I was opportunity to be part of one in which has grown me to become what I am today. Mm -hmm. So it has been a very great place to learn, to interact. We pray, we do everything together. We have uh, breaking of bread. The person in the house, the, the owner of the house will provide something, can provide something or the people coming can bring something. So it's always very exciting when uh, the week comes or the day comes to have a house church. And we count it as part of the church. So when the attendance is even being taken in the church, the leader will mention the attendance of people that attended the house church. And we count it as uh, people that attended the church on Sunday. So definitely some people may not be in church on Sunday, but being in a house church means that you are in the church during the week. So it was a place of growth and uh, strengthening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you for sharing. Wonderful. That's that's nice. I think uh, Rose also has written something. She's written, life groups are truly essential in our walk, our journey, uh, especially for new believers. Uh, life groups provide a setting of consistent follow through for those still maturing in the knowledge of the Christian way. Life groups maintain a connection with the rest in the church and with God. Every weekend, LG meetings build up <clears throat> and let members participate towards, uh, sorry, uh, members and lets members anticipate towards regrouping for Sunday service. There is also wisdom in the counsel of the godly 
many in the life group. Absolutely. So I, I think that it, it just resounds with each one of us as to the importance of a, of a, of a life group. Okay. Um, the other important things, uh, just a few more to go, is um, is what we look as into missions. How do we uh, help our families or do we encourage our families to engage in mission? And uh, here I think it's wise to say that every one of us who are believers, we are called to engage in missions. And what do we mean by missions? It's just uh, being in some way uh, fulfilling the commission that uh, the Lord gave to us about making disciples of all nations. So in whichever way uh, this involves, which, could, which would mean by winning the lost um, and discipling people in faith, bringing them to Christ, so as, uh, as families, we make a commitment to, to uh, engage in missions, uh, not just us as adults, but also in our children. So one way is to often take them alongside with you so that they begin to see how you personally involve and commit to sharing uh, God's word or equipping <clears throat> Uh, people of God in the ways of God, you know, or discipling them. So it is important for them, for, for families to commit to being missional. Um, it's not just reserved for those who are missionaries, but for each one of us. So in, uh, like, for example, in our church, we do conduct mission trips where we keep it open to the entire church and uh, you know there is a, a certain structure that is given there is a certain teaching that people go through and people sign up and they engage in missions so uh, either either you know through um, uh, 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 bringing about the gospel to the others or in any other form of service that they may feel most equipped in. But engaging in missions is, is something that we are called to do to, because of the commission that he's given us to make disciples. The next is, of course, being generous, being kind and uh, tithing, uh, a practice that we need to develop in families and also groom in our children is that of being generous, being good to others, being kind to others, as well as tithing into the local church. So this is a practice, like again, it's a discipline that we need to teach the children uh, and especially, you know, going back to scripture, we see this in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 8, you know, where, where uh, Paul talks about those who sparingly sow will reap sparingly. Those who sow bountifully will also reap bountifully. So when you give, you don't give grudgingly, but you give with a cheerful heart. And, uh, you know, because every, all our sufficiency comes from God. So uh, it is important to show children to be kind um, uh, through maybe through material goods or through any other form of maybe certain uh, works or acts of kindness. Not that any of this aids in our salvation, but out of our love for God, we, we, we consider it our responsibility to show the love and grace that God has for us. Uh, tithing is another way that we, uh, something that we need to build as principle for our children. And smaller ways of doing that is, you know, um, I know many homes do give, um, uh, well, what's that called? Why am I not able to get the word? They give uh, pocket money, yeah, the pocket money to children or a, a certain kind of a monthly allowance to children. And uh, whatever they earn from it, encouraging them to keep a tenth and being able to uh, either put it into the offering or uh, give it in some way to the church so that they learn this as a princip principle right from the beginning. And uh, it, it becomes a part of them, the importance of tithing. Through all of this, or in all that we do, something that we keep focused is that we, we, we are expressing and showing our families, our children, that whatever we do, it is to establish the, uh, the kingdom of God. Um, and, and, whatever, and, and we are doing it as a result of having a, having a, a culture 
a, a kingdom culture, a mindset that we want to extend the kingdom of God. So not just in probably doing things, but also the way that we think, the choices we make, the life that we have, um, the uh, you know the small disciplines that we have, everything that we do is doing. Uh, are we doing in order to establish the kingdom of God and the purposes of God? And that's what we want our children to see. That it doesn't. It's not turned into something that's ritualistic or something that seems more like a duty to be done, but it is being done as a result of our love for God and to see his kingdom being extended. So in everything, in the things that we do, maybe through worship, through prayer, um, through fellowship, through service, through giving, to, uh, through meeting together, through encouraging, through uh, building, all of this comes through the mindset of have, of of, devel uh, of developing this kingdom mindset of being focused on the kingdom of God. So whatever, wherever we are, that is what we want to focus on on with our children. Thereby, you know, and encouraging the entire spiritual experience that they have. That it's not just spiritual experience or spiritual growth. Yes, is personal, but it's also something that's done collectively and, of course, for the kingdom of God at large. Right. All right. OK, we have. Oh, uh, this is for one of the first times we've finished five minutes before class. That's good. Uh, is, is there any question, any any thought, anything that you all would like to express? Um, if not, we can close with a word of prayer and. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let me just uh, let me close with a word of prayer, and uh, uh, then we can uh, we can uh, close the class today. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your word that desires of us to be spiritually nurtured and nourished, Lord, and we thank you for the churches for the communities that you have put us in where we are we are being built we are being encouraged we are being strengthened lord we thank you because you have opened up these places your family god where we can connect back father we pray for those of us who have families that we will be diligent and Lord out of our desire that our families grow in you would encourage our children would encourage our families to become part of your fellowship of, of, a, of a greater household and family father we pray God that each of us will be blessed in our churches and we will be a blessing to those around us father Lord we pray master that uh, even as you've given us these places of, of worship, of fellowship, that we will be good stewards of all the talents and gifting you've given us. We will use each one of what you've given us to your service, Lord, and that we would do each of it well and in excellence, God, not keeping away anything, Father. Lord, help us to know that the more that we sow into your kingdom, Father, the more, God, that we are going to reap out of it. Father, we pray, God, our families, Lord, will have a kingdom mindset that everything we do in church, outside of church, Father, will, Lord, bear a culture that, that progresses your kingdom, Father. Lord, in, even in the little things of maybe showing kindness to someone, of, of giving a glass of water to someone, of providing for somebody's need, Father, may we be focused in expanding your kingdom. And more so, Lord, in the families of you have placed us, in, in, in the churches you've placed us, may, may we be, Lord, true to your calling of being with love and compassion and, um, and goodness to one another. Thank you, Lord. We bless our churches. We bless the places you have planted us in. Father, together, may we 
bring more disciples, Lord, to you. May we, may we fulfill the commission that you have for each one of us. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Lord, I pray for uh, each person on this call. Lord, um, I pray for those who may not be yet connected to a family uh, of God yet connected to a church father who may be seeking for one father i pray in jesus name that you will open the doors of a loving community that they can they can uh, come to father i pray for those hearts who have been hurt in in a church community i pray that you will release your forgiveness upon their hearts lord and and bring them lord to a place of love and oneness even in their communities Thank you once again, Lord. I pray especially for our children, any of them, Father, who are who may rebel against coming to church, who may rebel against being a part of your community. Lord, I pray, God, that you will find them out. You will seek them out. You will touch their hearts and uh, bring about a desire in them to connect with people of God, Father, and through that connection, Lord, see you in a greater light. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Lord, I bless each one on our call and those who have not been able to attend. I pray for your hand of wisdom, protection, and blessing be over them. In Jesus' matchless name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, everybody. God bless. And we shall meet next week. Thank you.